Welcome once again to a large model showman's engine, this is part 24. Some minor modifications after the steam test. The video where I show the steam test is part 23 of this series. Once I pushed the engine into the workshop, I dropped the fire. Because it was easier to clean up on the concrete floor than it was on the gravel outside. And what you're currently looking at is the grate and the ash pan. And as you can see, none of this is small and all of it is quite heavy. The ash pan's made from stainless steel, and in this part of the clip, using a piece of wood, I'm scraping some more of the ash out of the ash pan. Like all of this traction engine, this part is very well made. These mounting lugs are riveted to the ash pan, and they're all okay apart from this one, and I'm going to replace the rivet with a bolt. Also, I'm going to re rivet the damper arm because it's very loose. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change the bolts that hold the damper in place. This showman's engine was actually finished in 1996 and since then the small brass bolts holding on the damper have been okay but I think they're a bit feeble and they're getting a bit worn too. After fitting a bolt to the mounting bracket it's time to look at the damper arm. To fix this I'm going to use a rivet snap held in the vise and just hammer the rivets over on the inside. I've drilled holes of one eighth of an inch in diameter through the damper flap and the ash pan. This clip shows me screwing the five BA bolts in position with a nut on the inside. And to make sure that these nuts never work loose and drop off, I'm lock nutting them as well. You really have to think ahead. If I was going down the road on this traction engine and one of the damper bolts failed, the damper itself could drop down onto the road and severely damage both itself and the ash pan. Because this ash pan slung under the firebox is not very far from the road at any given time. That's a lot better. Mechanically, it's now solid. Now comes the difficult part. Well, it was initially very difficult. I'm going to refit this very heavy grate and the ash pan to the engine, which means I have to support it underneath whilst laying on the ground, and it's far too heavy for one hand. I tried a couple of pieces of wood to support it, but that didn't work either. This was a very dirty job. Look at the state of my hands and my arms. And then I had an idea. Obviously, the previous owners of the engine will be smiling about this because they will have done it many times. My idea was to put the ash pan in first, just support it on one side, then slide the grate into position. Then all I had to do was lift just one edge of it into the mountings for the other side. Quite simple when you think about it. The mechanism for holding the ash pan in place is quite clever. And although both sides are fabricated from the same piece of metal, you can locate the ash pan one side at a time. Yesterday's video was a special episode about how to adjust the oil delivery of a Foster type lubricator. And here is a shot of the part that I had to make, which is a special union on the outlet. First of all, I fit the stainless steel ball, then a spring, and then my special fitting, which compresses the spring, which in turn holds the stainless steel ball against the opening. This is a clip after I silver soldered the union to the end of a piece of 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe, and now this mechanical lubricator should deliver slightly less oil to the cylinder. The fitting in the centre on top of the cylinder is for the whistle, and the junction on it is so I can pipe some compressed air into it quite easily. During the steam test, what I found annoying was when I blew the whistle, even when the pressure was low, well, especially when the pressure was low, lots of water gushed forth from the whistle and sat on top of the cylinder. After a while, it boiled off with the temperature of the cylinder, which was okay until the next time I blew the whistle and the whole process started again. I didn't like this, so I thought about it for a while and then realised it was possible to put a pan underneath the whistle in a very similar manner to the pan that is underneath the piston rod and the valve rod gland. Then I could silver solder a pipe onto this pan under the whistle and the water would drain away into the lower pan. While I was looking for a suitable piece of metal to make this pan out of, I found this. It's a model boiler end plate that I got a long, long time ago. This is one of a pair. I don't know what happened to the other one. When I used to smoke, I used this in the workshop as an ashtray. 
So now it's time to give it a second lease of life. As you've just seen, I've drilled a hole in the middle of it and I'm cleaning it up in the lathe. The hole that I drilled in the middle was 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. Purely by chance in my box of metric nuts and bolts, I found a bolt that fitted into the hole in the centre. Quite a tight fit. Tight enough to hold the copper blank whilst I machined it. And after the machining process, I removed the tool marks on a piece of emery cloth. Because I didn't want this pan to have a machined appearance. After much cleaning and polishing, it looked like this. I machined it to be the same thickness as the washer that was originally underneath this valve. All I then needed to do was to drill a 3 16th of an inch diameter hole in one edge and silver solder a 3 16th of an inch diameter copper pipe into it. After which I put the whole assembly into my acid bath. And while the acid was doing its stuff, I thought I would clean up this really nice tube that is a chimney extension. My friend Simon Hudson at the Steam Workshop, from whom I bought the engine, sent me a really interesting photograph album, which documents the building of this engine. Starting with the wheels, going through the boiler, and all the way through to the finished engine, which was completed and painted and finished in 1996. It was interesting for me to note that originally this engine wasn't built as a showman's engine, it had a spoked flywheel. There are also some photographs of the canopy being made. The photographs show a really high standard of workmanship. So I'd like to thank my friend Simon at the Steam Workshop once again for taking the time to chase up this album. This clip is speeded up. And by the careful use of a small hammer, I'm knocking out as many dints as possible. And some of the dints took quite a while to knock out. But patience is a virtue, and after a while I got there. I was only concerned with the dints on the edges. I couldn't really get to the ones down inside the tube. In no time at all, my Kilrock K acid in the acid bath, Kilrock K, by the way, is kettle descaler, had done its stuff on the copper part. And after using, first of all, my polishing spindle, followed by using some Brasso wadding and a cloth, it now looks like this. Is it going to work? Well, I hope so. If it doesn't work fully, at least it will catch some of the water. And here I am once again, running the engine using my very, very small compressor. And you can clearly see at this speed how fast the arm on the lubricator is rotating. When I tightened the union nut onto the end of the adjustable part, it didn't appear to move, so this should be okay, I think. I'll keep my eye on the oil level and as long as it goes down everything's fine. I had a problem with the live steam injector so I'm having a look at it. I don't know what this is, it's a ball valve. Maybe on this type of injector the ball valve which is normally inside is external. I really don't know, I've never had any experience of injectors that look like this. As a starting point though I want to clean it up internally and the easiest way to do this is to decant some acid out of my acid bath into a plastic tub on the bench and leave it for 24 hours for the acid to do its stuff and get rid of any lime scale. Please stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.